Good evening, everybody. Um, so excited to be here with you this evening, and we are round three for our webinar. Um, we are talking all things soccer nutrition. We were talking about nutrition when it comes to soccer, pre and post games, and all of those things. Uh, recovery and uh, injury risk uh, prevention. Now we're going to be talking about supplements. Uh, supplements are huge in the athletic industry, so we're going to be diving in deeper of what that means, um, how to evaluate safely, and all, all things that you need to know when it comes to supplements. Uh, know that this is recorded, so we will be sending you the webinar out afterwards, so take notes throughout, but if you're missing some of the information, know that it will be sent out recorded, and then also, please, please, please feel free to ask questions in the chat throughout. I will be able to answer them throughout or at the end, or be able to follow up with you quickly with more information. So. I am Yvette Waters. I am the registered dietitian, nutrition strategist, and brand influencer for Rayleigh's. Um, I actually have my master's in sports nutrition, so I am a sports uh, dietitian. And for those of you who have been with me before, uh, you know that I have played soccer growing, all growing up and in college, so I love talking to you about this subject. So tonight, our main goal is to be um, talking about sports supplements and what it means to you as a soccer player. Some of the objectives, we're going to be diving into sports supplement basics, um, knowing about the different categories of supplements and how it affects your body, and then really what you need to know about supplements and picking what's right for you when it's actually needed and or wanted. But to first, it's the main goals of soccer, right? We're focusing in on achieving the highest performance during your training and during your competition. You want to play the best, the longest you possibly can, right? Especially when you're in, in, in competitive sports such as soccer and ODP. So it's also about improving and accelerating recovery. Um, it's about achieving and maintaining your optimal body weight and physical conditions, so being able to be fast and agile very quickly and for a long period of time. And then also minimizing that risk of illness and also injury, right? Those are your main goals when you're playing soccer. Oftentimes, people then look at supplements. Um, thing is, is sports supplements do represent a multi-million dollar industry. Um, and then the question really becomes, which of these supplements are actually effective? What am I taking? Why, why should I be taking it? How much should I be taking? What is actually in this? And that's what we're going to be diving in deeper today. But to start, the most effective way to enhance your soccer performance is always, always, always day-to-day -day sports nutrition. Um, having the best food that you possibly can, that's what's going to help amplify you to make you the best you possibly can be and also a consistent training program. Um, you know, eating the right foods at the right time uh, really creates that essential foundation for you as success as an athlete. I always, always say when it comes to supplements, um, remember this rule of thumb of supplements should be viewed as supplemental to the diet. They should not be viewed as a replacement for a good diet. You want to go food first, supplement if needed. So let's dive in deeper here. First, some of the basics. What is a sports supplement? Well, it is a food, a food component, a nutrient or a non-food component that you eat and or drink in addition to your usual diet. So once again, supplementing to your normal diet. Um, the goal of sports supplements tends to be to achieving a specific health and or performance benefit. So that means you want to run faster and be stronger. That's why people tend to take supplements. Um, what are supplements meant for? Well, they're intended to address periodic shortfalls in a well-balanced diet. Um, what that kind of means is they are also there to support in a specific need in a changing medical condition. What does that mean? Well, if you are iron deficient or anemic, um, if you have a vitamin D deficiency, that's when a supplement may be needed. Then there's also, it's important to know that specific sports supplements, um, you know, they may help with small performances, uh, performance improvements to certain athletes, but they're not supposed to be intended to make up for an inadequate diet. So that's always important, and I'll be hitting that pretty hard, is because supplementing to what you're already eating. Um, individualizing to you. Very big thing when it comes to supplements, and always keep in mind, 
Some a supplement may help some, but it may actually be detriment or hinder your performance to others. So just because your friend is taking a supplement and it works really well, doesn't always necessarily mean it's going to work great for you. So learning what works for you and your body is very, very important. So supplements go into three different categories. We have sports foods, so that's um, sports drinks, sports bars and electrolyte supplements. You see that kind of top picture. That's where you have those gels and sports bars. Then there's medical supplements. That's a, and those are our vitamins, minerals, things like that. Iron, calcium, vitamin D, omega-3, vitamin B. That's those type of supplements. Then there's specific performance supplements. And that's where you're going to see creatinine, caffeine, sodium bicarbonate, um, beta alanine, and nitrates. And these ones are specific to soccer. Are they regulated? This is always the question when it comes to supplements. Well, regulation for dietary supplements varies between countries. For the United States, dietary supplements are in this special category um, under this general umbrella of food, not drugs. So what does that mean? Well, that means that dietary supplements are not under the same regulation or that strict control is pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals are Advil, um, ibuprofen, Excedrin, things like that. So even though they're sold in the same places around in our store, they are not held to the same regulation. Um, and then there's that online. You can shop basically for any dietary supplement online now, um, but it's important to know the fact that they're not regulated to the same capacity in the United States and around the world. Um, a lot of those different products can come from different origins that we don't really know about. Sports foods. So what are you taking to supplement to provide you energy? That's when you're about to play a game, you need, you're feeling tired, you want to get, um, you want to get that energy up. That's when people are taking sports drinks, energy drinks, gels, electrolytes, protein supplements, energy bars, um, they're a convenient option. Um, that's when we were talking about if you're playing multiple games and competitions and tournaments, uh, maybe after to kind of increase your energy, you'll have a little bit of a sports drink like a Gatorade or a Powerade. Um, they tend to be a little bit uh, more expensive than regular, just like water and a granola bar. A sports bar is going to be slightly more expensive. Then there's medical supplements. What exactly are these? Well. Medical supplements tend to be vitamins and minerals. Um, vitamins and minerals, they play really important uh, roles in our body. And when we're playing soccer and we're putting, doing exercise, it puts our body under stress. Um, and when exercise stresses these what we call metabolic pathways or um, connections in our body to make our body be working to the best that we possibly can, you need vitamins and minerals. Um, they're required for those metabolic processes. So sometimes you want to you wanna make sure you're getting those vitamins and minerals in. That's always, always, always through fruits and vegetables. But sometimes people need to supplement with vitamins and minerals um, because they're trying to prevent or treat a nutrient deficiency. Things that we see in soccer is calcium and vitamin D. Um, these two are really important for bone health, also helps to support the immune system, helps for a lot of different things. Then there's also iron. Well, what iron does is it increases oxygen intake and reduces your heart rate. So what that means is or iron helps to take oxygen that you're breathing in and feeding it to your blood and to your muscles especially for young uh, women who are athletes, they can become iron deficient or anemic. And so there's lots of foods out there that you should have for iron before a supplement, but some have to supplement with iron. And it's important to always look at, look at the back, look at that supplement facts that you're kind of seeing here on the side and read the labels because iron does have what's called an upper limit of 45 milligrams a day, so that means you don't want to eat or drink any more than 45 milligrams a day. So you have to check in with your doctor to know how much of that supplement to take. Other things that people take, especially in soccer, are iodine, which helps with your thyroid, also folate, and vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is for our um, folks who are vegetarian or vegan. They usually supplement with vitamin B12 because that comes from animal proteins. 
best way is obviously always to consume a nutrient-dense diet and supplement if needed. If you're, if you're needing to supplement with vitamins and minerals, usually it can just be through a standard multivitamin. Um, it's always important to read that label, so turn that over on the back. You're seeing that supplement facts panel on the back. Read it and just make sure that that percent on the um, right-hand corner of it, all of the, that column, that those percentages, you don't need anything that says 2,000% daily value or 4,000%, that's too high. So looking for something that's like under 100% because remember you're eating and drinking too. Then there's sports performance supplements. What are, what are some supplements that are found to directly improve performance? So that's like you're taking right before um, a workout and that's supposed to help amplify your performance. This is from the National Institute of Health. Important to note that um, all of this information is public and online, so I always encourage to take a look and dive deeper, do your own research to figure out what works best for you and your family. Um, but caffeine is a big one, um, and caffeine may enhance performance when taken before activity is what research is showing. Um, what it does is it decreases your perception of pain and fatigue, so you actually think you feel less tired or have less pain or soreness than um, might might be occurring the day after. Um, caffeine has also been found to increase your coordination, so focus, um, and then help to sustain t uh, training in intensity. So that's why people tend to take caffeine. Um, beetroot juice or beet juice, what this is, is um, it has naturally occurring what's called nitrates. And what does that do? Well, that helps to um, essentially dilate your blood vessels and reduce oxygen use. So what does that mean? It increases your energy. It allows for you to keep breathing and keep working hard and feeling very ener uh, energetic and that's from like beet juice and beets. So you, that's obviously a root vegetable and you can have but that's why you see a lot of like beet juices out there or beet powders. Um, then there's also sodium bicarbonate. So sodium bicarbonate has been found to possibly um, help decrease fatigue or that tiredness. Especially when we're playing in those games and you're playing without a sub, you may be feeling tired. So that's why people tend to take sodium bicarbonate. Then there's what's called quercerin. This is a supplement that helps decrease inflammation and improves blood flow. Um, so it just helps to, your body is once again when you're uh, exercising a lot in an inflamed state and quercerin helps to decrease that inflammation. Once again, these are just what often people are taking, but we're going to be diving deeper into if it's right for, right for us as athletes and student athletes. Then there's beta alanine. Beta alanine is actually probably one of the, um, one of the highest used supplements. Um, a lot of people take it as pre-workout and they get that tingly feeling in their fingers and in their toes. That's beta alanine. Um, what beta alanine does is it may help with muscle fatigue and explosive movement. So think of when you're weightlifting and you need that explosive movement. That's when people are taking beta alanine. However, there is little to no performance ben benefits for activities lasting for more than 10 minutes. So for our soccer players, that's endurance. Um, beta alanine has not been found to be a supplement to help with that. Um, then there's also creatinine. Uh, our body already makes creatinine. It makes it in the liver, in the kidneys, and in the pancreas. And it also is found in food. It's found in meat, fish, poultry. But what creatinine is often taken as is to help maintain quick explosive movements in high intensity. Once again, this is for people who are like weightlifting um, but there's little benefit to endurance exercise. This is just kind of, this is one of those that if we are needing and or wanting to take um, the, one of these supplements and stuff, um, if you take a look at that right hand column, it's protocols and practical recommendations. This is from the NIH. So suggesting how much to take in things like that because it's very important to know how much of something that you should take. And this is, once again, recorded so you always can take a look at it after. Then there's supplements that are called to indirectly improve your performance. So maybe you don't take right before playing a game or training or something like that, but 
Um, this is why it's so important to have a balanced diet on and off the field. It's for things like this. First is antioxidants. These are vitamin C, vitamin E, coenzyme or CoQ10. All of these come from uh, tons and tons of fruits and vegetables have antioxidants in it. You want to have eat lots of fruits and vegetables, get lots of antioxidants, because what that does is that helps to minimize what's called free radical damage, so damage that happens in your body, um, and reduce your muscle fatigue, so reduce your tiredness of your muscles, and also your soreness. And um, there are supplements out there, that, but this is definitely like a food first. Then there's immune support supplements. Um, it's very important for us to um, try not to be sick, especially now in the colder months. Obviously, COVID is a thing. Um, so how do we keep our immune system nice and healthy? This is through, obviously, foods, but there are tons of supplements out there as well. Things like probiotics, vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, um, vitamin E. There's also fish oil or omega-3 fatty acids. There's supplements such as herbal supplements, such as echinacea. And then there's also curcumin. So this is where turmeric, that yellow spice that you have in curry, that is um, what curcumin is, that active compound that is bound to help your immune system. Um, then there's also tart or sour um, cherry juice. And you kind of see it over there. It's like just tart cherry. It's very, very tart. Um, usually you just like add a little bit of that in and add it in with some other juice or some water. But tart cherry juice, especially for soccer, has been found to aid with muscle strength recovery, reducing your soreness, and reducing uh, your inflammation. So um, this is one of the ones that you can always just grab off of the shelf and have in your fridge and add a little bit, um, a little bit of juice and have it with water. Um, then there's also been found to indirectly improve, along with directly, is creatinine. Uh, once again, you can get that in meat and poultry, things like that, but may help build your muscles post-workout. So if you're on off-season, you're weight training, things like that, if you eat that protein, you can also actually get your creatinine in there too. I get asked this a lot about pre-workout, um, and so I wanted to touch on it. When people are looking for a pre-workout, they're often looking, there's a lot of things out there, C4, all sorts of things, but when you're kind of looking, you're looking for what's BCAAs, or branched chain amino acids. If you remember what we talked about last time, we talked about that amino acid leucine, which helps with protein building and protein synthesis, that is a BCAA. There's leucine, isoleucine, and valine. This comes obviously in food, but BCAAs are also found in powders and drinks and things like that. What it's been found to help with is provide your energy during exercise. But if you're taking BCAAs, when's the time to take it? Um, it's been found to help with uh, gaining greater muscle mass during strength training, so when you're lifting weights in off-season, um, but not necessarily during on-season. And BCAAs are in drinks, things like that, but also food. Then for pre-workout, when you're looking for a supplement, such as a caffeine or a sim uh, stimulant or something like that, always go food first. So that's where you could have some coffee or some tea or even some chocolate has caffeine in it. Um, then if you're looking for that nitrates or those nitric oxides, that's where for food you're looking for beets, meat, dairy, nuts. Um, those all have those nitric oxides that kind of help. Then if you're looking for creatinine, um, when you're in, in the weight room and kind of building, that's when you look for meat, fish, and poultry. So this is just a reminder, if you do have any questions, definitely put it in the chat, and um, I will be sure to answer them, and uh, we'll keep going. So then that's always about evaluating supplements. Couple tips to know when it comes to supplements before. If your friend is taking one and you're like, hey, this is really awesome, you should take this, always, always keep this in the back of your head. Things to consider with supplements. First, dietary supplement companies are uh, not required to prove their product's safety, purity, or effectiveness. What that means is you might see on that bottle a lot of claims, uh, weight loss, uh, strength, things like that, those claims could be um, stronger than that what's actually occurring in that bottle. 
then it's really important um, manufacturers of, so the places where dietary supplements are made, um, they must list all their ingredients on their labels. However, they put proprietary blends or things like that. Whenever you see a blend, um, that can actually contain what's called banned substances or, um, or, thing, or contaminants. And this is because of poor manufacturing practices. And this can really affect you or your eligibility as you go into college ball. Um, you know, there are reports of a lot of contamination and impurities in that supplement. So what's claimed to be in that little tab or supplement is not actually what's, what is in there. Um, so we'll talk about how to shop, how to shop around that. Um, and important to know, especially when you're a student athlete, and if you're looking to go and play college ball at the NCAA level, D, uh, D1, D2, this is when um, to know when it comes to drugs, drug testing, if you do get a positive test with a banned substance in it, that can be a minimum of a year of loss of eligibility. So that means you couldn't play for, for at least a year. So things to consider when it comes to supplements. That's why we're going to, um, there's going to be about seven tips here on how to shop supplements safely. And this is for, for my student athletes, but also for my families too. Uh, first, take a look at that back. See if it has a nutrition facts panel or if it has a supplement facts panel. It'll always, always say it on that back. And it'll say it right here at the top. First, if it's a nutrition facts panel, you can feel good about it. That means the FDA is regulating it. However, whenever you see a supplement facts panel, which is usually in dietary supplements, things like that, that's when you need to dive deeper um, because they are not held to the same regulations as nutrition facts panels. So always take a look at that back and start to read. Then what do you, what do, you do when you see that supplement facts panel? Um, that's when you take number two. If you take a look, we have NSF in that blue circle, NSF, we have Informed Sport and USP. What all of these are, are these are called third party uh, certifications or organizations. And these, you want to look for these little tabs on that, on that nutrition or on that um, package. Right when you see that blue NSF, you can feel good about it because what that means is a third party organization went into that facility and they watched how the um, product or that supplement was being made and they make sure that um, there's no banned substances in it. And they make sure it's a clean product and they make sure that when it says um, 200 milligrams of vitamin D, there are 200 milligrams of vitamin D in that capsule. So what it says on the package is actually in that capsule and you just wanna find one of those three labels on your package when you're shopping. If they don't have that, um, if you're shopping online, that means you need to look deeper into that supplement fact. So look into their website and learn more. Then a couple things to look at is does the product say on that back, does it say um, right in here, will it say proprietary blends or herbal ingredients? Those are both what we would call red flags. Um, a proprietary blend, that means they may omit or not tell you about certain ingredients. So you want to know what is in that blend. And many, many powders, um, pre-workouts, things like that, use proprietary blends. So you want to look at the website to find out what it is. Anything that says herbal ingredients, that may be a risk of contamination. So you don't know where that herbal ingredient is coming from and if it is actually, if it was contaminated or not. So once again, when you see those, that would be a red flag. So number four is then um, for our, our student athletes who are going into NCAA, D1, D2, as when you want, if you want to keep playing ball as you continue to get older, look into their guidelines. Um, they share everything online for, for our college athletes. Wer learn what they're looking for when it comes to supplements in specifically. Then it's always, always about asking, your, asking questions to yourself as you're looking at supplements. So questions to consider would be, you know, why do I want to take this supplement? Um, can I get it through food? 
um, how much of a dosage or what is, how much should I take and how often? Those are things that you want to ask yourself before buying, these, um, buying a supplement. And then what does it cost? You know, um, because if your friend or if your teammate is taking it, and um, this is really good. There's a, my favorite, my favorite soccer player is, uh, takes it as well, but it might cost a lot more. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's the best product out there. So dive into the quality of the product. Don't worry as much about the price initially. Um, anything that on that, on that package, if it says an MLM supplement, um, that's, uh, that's a red flag. Keep an eye out for those because those are more subscription based so they are looking to generate a lot of profit off of repeat purchases. So if they're trying to put you in a subscription or things like that, just look for what's best for you then look at the price or who's influencing it. Then, uh, so what is the athlete's complete dietary picture? That's another question to kind of ask you. Um, are you taking other supplements? Should you be taking them all together? Uh, that's where you would look online and see, compare it to what recommendations are for a daily allowance. That's an RDA. So look for that RDA or that recommended daily intake recommendations of that supplement before taking too much or too little. Um, then there's also looking at what's called an upper limit or a UL. That's why we were talking about with iron when there's um, don't take more than 45 milligrams a day. That's where it's kind of learning, learning where it's not too much, not too little, what's the, what's the perfect spot for you. And always remember supplements should be second to food, but it is a multi-million dollar industry. So it's really important to learn how to shop uh, this carefully and what's important to you and your health and um, shop it cleanly. So with that, do we have any questions tonight? Nope? Okay. So we are good to go. Thank you so much for joining again. Uh, once again, we are going to be sending out this recording and uh, can't wait to chat with you guys soon again. Okay. Bye.